Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a quick and easy card featuring the Emboss Resist technique and the new Sunkissed Autumn Stamp TV kit. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to do this technique. First, you're going to need some Versamark ink. And I have a Versamark ink pad along with some fine detail clear embossing powder. You're also going to need an anti-static pad. This removes static and oils from the surface of your paper so that the embossing powder will only stick to the areas that you want it to. Then you're going to need some stamps and I'm using two of the clear stamps from the new Sunkissed Autumn Stamp TV kit and these are both the dandelion stamps. Then I have a couple of sponge daubers and a couple of ink pads and I'm using the rich cocoa ink and the peanut brittle ink. I also have a piece of glossy cardstock. Now you can do this technique on regular cardstock, but when using the glossy cardstock, everything seems to pop out even a little bit more, so you may want to try it with some glossy. To begin, I'm going to take this anti static pad and rub it all over the surface of this glossy cardstock. Then, using some Versamark ink, I'm going to first stamp the larger of the two stamps, the large dandelion, randomly all around this piece of cardstock. And I'm going to try to do it in a little bit of an order that I'm going to remember so I don't stamp over areas that I've already stamped. But even though you can't see it here on the camera, I can see if I turn this a little bit, I can see that glossy shine where that image is already stamped. So I can be a little bit careful not to stamp right over one of the images that I already stamped. And we'll do one more up here in the corner. Now I'm going to use the smaller stamp and I'm going to fill in a little bit where I don't have any images and not a whole lot of places. I'm just going to do one there, and I'm going to do one down here in the corner, and that looks pretty good. Okay, so my next step is to take some of this fine detail clear embossing powder, and it really is a good idea to use a detail powder when you're using such a delicate image such as this dandelion stamp. And I'm going to grab a little piece of scrap paper here and sprinkle that embossing powder right over my stamped images. Now I'm going to blow away any excess. Let's just put a little bit more powder here. Just check it and make sure it's everywhere you want it to be. There, I've blown away the excess. Now I don't know if that, if you can see that at all. I think you can see it a little bit. You can see the little raised dandelions there. Those are going to get nice and shiny once I hit it with an embossing tool. So let me get rid of that excess embossing powder and close that up. And now I'm using the Marvi heat tool. You can use any heat tool you have. And I'm going to heat up these images so they get nice and shiny. And you'll be able to see them get shiny. And as soon as they do, then you can move the tool onto the next area because you don't want to burn the embossing powder or else the emboss resist technique won't work very well. Turn that in my hand. Some people use a little tweezer to hold their paper and that's a good idea or um, even a clothespin will work, a wooden clothespin. But if you don't have anything, you're holding it in your hand halfway through, you're definitely going to need to turn the paper. Okay, now I'm going to just take a look at that and see if I can see that's all done. Okay, now when you're working with embossing powder, you do want to give it a second to cool because if you start working on it right away and it's still a little bit warm, it can smear. But once it's cool, you'll be able to tell, you'll be able to touch it and nothing will feel sticky and you can go ahead to your next step. So for my next step, I'm going to use some of the Peanut Brittle Memento ink and a sponge dauber. I'm going to ink up that sponge dauber and then I'm going to, right over these images, I'm going to begin to add color. 
And the glossy cardstock is really nice because it gives you a little bit of work time before the ink dries completely. So you can go back over certain areas again. Okay, so now I've added some color there and you can see some of these uh, dandelions peeking through. Now I'm going to add a darker shade and that is the rich cocoa. And just a little bit here and there just to give it a little bit of depth. Maybe a little bit toward the center of those dandelions to make them pop out a little bit more. And you certainly can try this technique with distress inks too. That's also a really nice look. So there I've just deepened it up a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more here. There. So my final step for the emboss resist technique is to take a paper towel and rub the paper towel over the surface and you can see that makes the dandelions pop out even more because there can be a thin film of ink covering up the dandelions and that's never going to dry because that's on top of embossing powder. So just take a paper towel and wipe that all off and your images will just pop out even more. So let's go back to this side and I'll wipe off any powder that was on there. Now I'm going to assemble my card, but I am going to stamp a greeting. And I'm going to use some of this espresso truffle ink. And since these are dandelions, kind of the skeletons of dandelions, I'm going to use the Make-A-Wish greeting from the new Sunkissed Autumn Stamp TV Kit. So stamp that right about there. There we go. And then I'm going to use that same sponge dauber that has a little bit of that cocoa ink on it. And I'm going to pick this up and I'm just going to edge around my image, my greeting. That just makes it look a little bit more distressed and a little rustic. And it frames it out nicely without having to cut a piece of brown paper to fit behind it. A little bit of burnished look to it. All right. Now I'm going to use a piece of our honey mustard cardstock as part of my background, but I want to give it a little bit of a distressed look too. Not with color necessarily, but with texture. So I'm going to use the Forest Branches Cuddlebug folder and my Cuddlebug to emboss a background here. I'm going to start with my A plate and my B plate. Put those into the machine. And then slip the, cu the cuddle bug folder open and put that piece of cardstock right in there. And then another B plate on top. And feed that through the machine. That's going to give me some nice autumn texture for the background of my card. There we go. And that is going to get mounted on top of some of our dark chocolate cardstock. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of mono adhesive. Now, always check your texture on both sides because they do look a little bit different from front to back. And you might prefer one over the other. So take a look at both sides before you make your final decision. Okay. So there's my nice rustic background. Now I want to show you a piece that I cut out using my Cameo. This is a really nice little set of borders. This whole set of borders, it had about five borders in it, was 99 cents. So I bought this particular set and then I just eliminated the other images by clicking on them and deleting them. And I just cut out a couple of these that I wanted to use for these projects that I'm making. And then after I cut that with the Cameo, I measured it up against my piece of glossy cardstock that I was working on and I cut it down to fit. So it's the same measurement going across as this piece of glossy cardstock. Then I took that piece and I cut it down the center to create these two little pieces. Now I know they're not cut evenly down the center but that's okay because we're going to use some more cardstock that's going to cover that up so you don't have to be super precise about that. But I just cut them right down the center 
And now I've got a strip of chocolate cardstock that I'm going to mount this particular embossed, embossed resist piece on top. And then I'm going to create a nice little border using those pretty scalloped borders that I grabbed off of the Silhouette Store website. These are not anything that we designed, but you can buy these for 99 cents right in the Silhouette Store. And then I'm going to add that right to the back of this little piece that I just created. And I'm going to do that just by adding a strip of mono adhesive down this side and one down this side because I'm going to put one on each end. Okay. So it's nice and easy to line that up because you can line it up right along that little free edge you have there of brown sticking out from that layer and that'll make it nice and even. Just like that. And then the other side I'm going to do the same way. Let me turn it around here. And just slip that on there as well. What a pretty little focal image that has become now. And I'm going to add my greeting right down here. And then I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of dark chocolate ribbon. So this is going to get attached with a little bit of mono adhesive. Right there. And then I'm going to cut a little strip of this dark chocolate ribbon. And just let it carry over on the edge because I'm going to fold it around the back. And I like to actually put some adhesive right on the ribbon too, just so that it sticks down nicely on the front. And I'll add a little bit of mono adhesive on each side there. So once I get everything into place, I don't have to pick up the adhesive again. I'm just going to cover up the very top of that Make-A-Wish greeting. Like that. And you can straighten out your ribbon. This mono dot adhesive is very forgiving, so if it's not perfect right away, you can play with it a little bit before it becomes permanent. And there is my focal image. And this piece is going to lay right on top of that cuddle bugged card surface there. And I'm going to need a little bit of extra mono adhesive on the back over where the ribbon is, but I still have quite a bit here. And I'll put that into place. There we go. And press that down. Now for those of you who like to write inside of a white or an ivory card base, what I did was I took a piece of the Gina K Designs Ivory Heavy Base Weight cardstock, and then I cut a panel in our Honey Mustard the exact same size as the front. This way I can upholster this card base with some color, but when I open it up it will still be ivory on the inside. So I'll apply that first to the front. I like to do that just by standing them both up and lining them up perfectly and then pressing down. And there you have your honey mustard or dark mustard, honey mustard on the top, and then inside you have your ivory. I have mustard on the brain. I think I'm hungry. Okay, and then this panel is going to go right on top of that. You can see how nicely that frames out your focal image. Again, a little bit of mono adhesive on the back. And line that up right in the center. And you have a quick and easy card. This is a nice card for a birthday or for any time somebody wants to make a wish. Try this card project using soft blues and silvers for a pretty winter card. Or use a red, white, and blue color scheme for next year's 4th of July projects.